Hi, I'm Jeff from the Nurture Nature Center. Uh, we've been presenting a series of videos to you the last few weeks, and usually these videos have been about different science projects that you can do at home. This one's going to be a little bit different. I actually doubt that you'll be able to do this at home unless you have a 3D printer, because that's what today's topic is going to be. We're going to be talking about 3D printing. We're going to be talking about how we can use 3D printing and how it might change the future of manufacturing. And to do that, we're actually going to be looking at a couple different 3D printers that I own here in my home. I have three different kinds of 3D printer, and we'll be looking at how they work. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, the material they use to print with, and we'll look at some of the finished products that I've made with my 3D printers. Uh, but first, we should probably understand what 3D printing is and how it's different from other forms of manufacturing. If you get right down to it, there's really only three different kinds of manufacturing. There's only three different ways that we can make things. And those are additive techniques, subtractive techniques, and forming techniques. So let's say I have a piece of material that I want to work into uh, an object. This is some clay. I could take this clay and I could begin to form it. It's flexible and I can bend it and warp it and change its shape. Uh, we might do this with clay. We might do this with certain kinds of plastics. Uh, we might do this with various metals. Now metals can be very hard to form at room temperature, but if you take a metal or certain kinds of plastics and you heat them up, uh, they become more and more malleable, they become uh, bendable, and then you can begin to shape them. This piece of clay is actually a little on the chilly side and I'm struggling to form it, uh, but I'm able to form it into the shape of a star, right? I've taken my material and I've changed its shape. I've squeezed it and pushed it and pulled it and formed it into a star. That's one way. But another technique would be subtractive techniques. Uh, this is uh, one of the more common techniques we use today as well. Um, you know, if you want to manufacture, say, a door, um, you might take a piece of wood and you might begin to cut it. And you will cut from a larger piece of wood uh, slats or boards that you can assemble into a door. But you took a door, you took wood, and you cut it to turn it into a door. And I can take my clay and I can just begin to cut out, took my clay and I cut off pieces to make a square. That would be subtractive techniques. Additive techniques are what 3D printers use. So with additive forming, you take uh, your, your material you wanna, that you want to turn into an object and you remove little pieces of it. Okay, so I start with this little, little tiny piece. And I lay it down and I take another little piece and I lay it down and I keep doing this. I keep ripping off little tiny pieces of my clay and sticking them together. Made a star by ripping off smaller pieces of clay and putting them together. That kind of looks like a little person actually, doesn't it? But I've taken smaller pieces of clay and I've assembled them into a larger object. Rather than starting with a big object and cutting away pieces, or starting with a big object and warping it into uh, a shape, I've taken my starting material and ripped off little bits and pieces and added them together. And this is essentially what a 3D printer does. Now, some 3D printers uh, can actually work with metals. They get so hot that they can melt and lay down layers of metal. Uh, my 3D printers don't work that way. My 3D printers only reach temperatures of around uh, 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, and really, they're, really that, they're not that much different from a hot glue gun. Many of you probably have one of these at home. Um, a hot glue gun uh, takes uh, a type of plastic, a thermoplastic like this, and we melt it at this end, it gets very hot, and as the glue is melted, we can squeeze it out, we can extrude it onto a surface, we can lay there, lay down a layer of, of glue. If we wait for that glue to cool off, we could, in theory, lay another layer on top of it, and wait for that to cool off, and build another layer, and another layer. And that's all a 3D printer does. It heats up some plastic and melts it down, and extrudes it into a layer, and then it moves up and does another layer. 
And by doing that, you can build a three-dimensional object. And in fact, I have a handheld 3D printer that really looks quite similar to the hot glue gun I was just holding. This is a type of three doodler. Um, that's a brand name. This isn't actually a three doodler, but uh, it works like a hot glue gun where I have a button that I press and it extrudes my 3D printing filament, uh, heats it up and extrudes it out this end. And I can draw an object uh, on a piece of paper. I can make a layer and then I can draw another layer on top of that and I can make a three dimensional object. So if you want to 3D print something, you really need three things. You need your 3D printer, you need your filament, which might be plastic or metal or other materials, and you need instructions. You need instructions for the 3D printer to make something. Uh, you can make those instructions yourself. There are, there's software that you can use for free on the internet, things like Tinkercad, where you can make shapes in, in a three-dimensional environment, uh, and then you can uh, send those instructions to your, to your 3D printer, and it will create whatever object you've made. Or you can go to uh, other websites like Thingiverse, which have uh, a large listing of 3D printed objects already made by other people that have generously shared these shapes uh, over the internet. And you can you know, pick one of these, uh, download them, and send the instructions to your 3D printer. And then it's as simple as hitting print at that point. You press the button, and the 3D printer begins to make an object. So we have here uh, two different 3D printers. This is an Ender 3, and this over here is a uh, Delta Mini, made from Monoprice. Uh, they both are printing right now. Uh, the Ender 3 is printing a gold star, and that will be uh, completed by the end of this video. Uh, and the Monoprice is printing something that I needed to hang a mirror, an angled bracket that I'm gonna use to hang a mirror later. So, if we take a look at the Ender 3, we can see that it's moving around quite a bit. Uh, this right here, this, this object that I'm pointing at, uh, contains a fan that's blowing on the uh, object that's being printed. You can sort of see it in the video, I think, and it is a star, a golden star. These fans blow on the filament that's coming out here, and they make sh the fans just make sure that the filament cools off very quickly so that we can lay down another layer on top of it. You don't want to be putting your next layer onto an old layer that's still hot. You want it to cool off and harden before you put the next layer down. So it's extruding hot filament onto our, onto our object that we're making and building it up in layers. And it moves in three different directions. It can move in the uh, X axis, the Y axis, and after it's made a layer, it can move in the Z axis, which is this direction. It can move upwards. And as long as we can move in these three different directions, we can make a three-dimensional object, any three-dimensional object, uh, a star, a square, a circle, or something really complex. We can, for example, make a fairly accurate replica of a human skull. Move up here, you can see what I'm printing with. It's a large spool of PLA plastic. This is a type of plastic that uh, melts at a low enough temperature that our 3D printer can work with it. Other types of plastic might melt at much higher temperatures, and so I can't use them here. I need a plastic that will melt at 200 degrees, which is 200 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature that this 3D printer is working at. Now, sometimes uh, a 3D printed object might fail. Um, for example, it, uh, I might run out of plastic in the middle of a print without realizing it, um, or maybe uh, I might. Uh, the print might come off of the printer bed uh, or some other problem may occur. Maybe there's a power outage during the 3D print. Uh, at that point, I have a failed print and I have a whole bucket of failed prints right here. Uh, this is a bucket of PLA plastic that was supposed to be part of a 3D printed object, um, but for one reason or another, it failed. And we can recycle this. Use PLA, I can use um, ABS for, uh, plastic, for example. Uh, I don't normally work with that, but I can use it. It's a stronger type of plastic, but it does give off fumes. And you can also add different things to your PLA to change its properties. So over here, the uh, the Delta Mini is actually 3D printing uh, with PLA that has wood fiber added to it. And when that print is done, the object will actually look and feel 
like wood. Uh, you can sand it. It has it has the strength of a, a wooden object. Uh, so that's a really neat thing you can do. You can also add metals to PLA. Microscopic particles of metal added to the PLA will make it stronger, make it shinier. Um, you can even make PLA that's electrically conductive if you add enough metal to it. PLA that that will glow in the dark. Uh, I have plastics that look like stone. This looks like marble when you've printed with it. Uh, here's one that looks like silver. And here's one more that looks like emerald. So I've been 3D printing for over a year, and in that time, I've made a lot of really neat things, uh, some things that are useful that you can use around the house. Uh, this is a uh, toothpick holder that looks like a porcupine. Uh, I've made uh, models of uh, mostly things from movies. I'm a really big fan of uh, certain action movies. Like this is a, a golden a replica of the Ark of the Covenant as seen in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, here is a 3D printed owl. We used our marble filament and it really does look like stone. Rex, it's called a Flexi Rex. Uh, this printed uh, came off the 3D printer like this. I didn't have to snap anything together. So we can actually make flexible parts with our 3D printer. Uh, this is a tugboat. Uh, you might wonder why I 3D printed this tugboat. Well, it's kind of a tradition in the 3D printing world to print one of these. Uh, it's called Benchy the Tugboat. And uh, most people, this is the first thing they 3D print. And it was for me too. On both of my 3D printers, the first thing I printed was a Benchy. Got to follow tradition, right? Um, here's another interesting object. This is a Tesseract or a Hypercube. This is a three-dimensional model of a four-dimensional object. Model of Sonic the Hedgehog, printed with copper PLA. Wonderful model of a Saturn V rocket. Uh, this took over 40 hours to 3D print. I printed it in white PLA, and then I had to paint these black stripes on it. Uh, so it, I had to print it in sections because again, 3D printer, I printed it on the larger 3D printer over here. Uh, it can only make objects that are uh, up to 220 millimeters high. This is a lot larger than that. So it's actually printed in segments. So, for example, this is the uppermost segment on the Saturn V. This is the uh, command module and the service module. So, 3D printing is Really neat technology. You can use it at home to uh, to make objects that you might need around your house. Uh, useful things. You can actually even use 3D printing uh, in space. Uh, NASA is actually working on using 3D printers on the International Space Station. The advantage of that is that you can uh, send you know filament or some other material that you need to print with to outer space to up to the International Space Station, and then if they need a new kind of tool or a new part that they didn't think of, they can make it there in space. They don't have to wait for the next uh, available rocket to send a, a part to the International Space Station. They can just make it there. But anyone who has a 3D printer can you know, very quickly uh, download a file or say a face mask and they can 3D print it. So this is a 3D printed face mask that I made uh, on that printer right back there. Some people are 3D printing face shields and uh, some people are actually donating these things to hospitals and uh, other uh, healthcare workers. Uh, and I think that's really wonderful that we can use um, 3D printing in a crisis because it's so easy to change what the 3D printer is making. So thank you for, uh, for joining us today and, and learning all about 3D printing. Catch you next week.